movement. She's got a really high spin rate, so she's going to try and keep those Tigers off balance. And for Auburn, the Sunday lineup starts with Anna Woolers. Woolers, a solo home run in the game yesterday and carries a 350 average into this contest. And a 1-1 count to start her off. So in some ways, the Aggies have really handled business in the SEC because this weekend they've secured their third series win in conference play. That will be taken care of by Coco Woolley. Yeah, and you know, SEC wins come at a premium, right? So anywhere you can capitalize, especially within a series, to be able to clinch their third straight series and have the opportunity to go for the sweep on Sunday, you know, just helps them out down the road as that schedule it gets even tougher. Mm -hmm. Rose Roach will hit from the left side. Crashing in from third base as Roach showed bunt was Kennedy Powell. Pulled back on it. Because I just think uh, the Aggies, they didn't just win a home series to start SEC play. They swept South Carolina. And then when you go on the road, maybe some coaches and players don't like hearing it, but I think when you go on the road, you're just trying to get one. And mm -hmm. then if you add another to it, that's bonus. Well, A&M got the bonus in Starkville last mm -hmm. week because they took the road series and already, I mean, if they could, I mean, they're just so ahead of the game at 7-1. and one. When you think about the SEC is so tough and most teams are just trying to be right around 500 by the time it's all over. Yeah, absolutely. And it could be anybody's day and mm -hmm. any given day in the SEC. And so, like you said, to be able to get those early wins, series wins, a sweep, it all helps. Fouled away, first base side. But then Auburn may be on the opposite side of it. Two and six in conference play. They have to feel like they've got ground to make up. Absolutely. And they're still, like you said, they're two and six. They're working towards they haven't won a, an SEC series yet. And so, and their schedule does not get any easier as well. Next week they're hosting Tennessee at home. So mm -hmm. you gotta find them when you can get them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Roach fouled that away, so she stays alive. And Roach comes in with a 318 average. Talked about it with Roach. She's kind of a triple threat in that lefty batter's box. She can slap, she can hit, she can lay down a bunt. And now a full count on a pitch that just missed up. That went all the way to the netting. Big miss on a full count pitch. And then Roach kind of rounded first base, and now she is down at first base after diving back, and the training staff will have to come out. Yeah, you saw Julia Cottrell throw down to first. Parton in as the runner, Isis Trezvik will hit. And the first offering to her outside for a ball. And for people who have been watching this weekend, you'll notice this Auburn lineup has been di a little bit different every day. Mickey Dean's just trying to find a combination that works for this group. And then on the opposite side, it feels like A&M has settled in mm -hmm. on a lineup in some ways. Well, they've seemed to have found what, what works uh, just from a sense of one through nine can get it done and in different ways. And I think that's really important to note that it's not just pop or it's not just speed. You've got a combination of things that work to get them to score runs. Fouled away by Tresvik. So the Tigers with a base runner with one out. But already an early injury as Rose Roach has left the game. 
Out in front of that is Trezvik, and Brooke Vestal has her first strikeout of the afternoon. Really pretty pitch by Vestal here. Look at all that spin. That's really tough to lay off of. Gets that late break, and Trezvik can't hold up. So trying to strand a runner, two outs. And Michaela Packer steps to the plate. Said it when we came on the air. I mean, there's a lot of wind in the air today, mm -hmm. blowing from the right field pole to the left field, so kind of out toward left field. Here's the 1-0. Swing and a miss, and that's 1-1. One and one. So pitchers will have to be careful today. Yesterday, a gorgeous Saturday, but it's kind of been replaced by a, a gray and windy Sunday. Mm -hmm. Way outside on the pitch to Michaela Packer. Yeah, how could you not want to be at the ballpark yesterday? And great crowd here at Davis Diamond, as there should have been. Yeah. Solid crowd on hand today, despite the weather not quite as nice mm -hmm. as 24 hours ago about. So now two and two, and Brooke Vestal a pitch away from closing out the top of the first. Trying to get through Packer. Low and scooped out of the dirt by the catcher, Julia Cottrell. Tries to go with that drop. Let's see if she goes that way again. I imagine she's going to try and work low, especially with the wind blowing out today. That's hit hard, but that's going to just go foul down the left field line. Likely extra bases for Packer if it stays fair. But hooking down that left field line, it just did land foul. Check swing, and that's a high bouncer foul toward the Auburn dugout. So still full with two outs. Packers working a nice at bat here. Just again, once you get two strikes, you want to foul off pitches, keep working that count until you get something you like. So another 3 2 pitch. Rung her up, called strike three. And Vestal gets two strikeouts. This year, nine home runs and already one pitch in. Coco Woolies on first base. Yeah, really nice job early by Coco Woolley jumping on the first pitch. And that's exactly what Coco looks to do is send that ball either through the 5-6 hole or out to left field. When you get her on base, she can be dangerous. Amari Harper to the plate. So the Aggies already one on. Auburn now has Maria Penta, the sister of Maddie, at second base due to the early injury in the top of the first to Rose Roach. Runner is going. Woolley, the throw is skipped in, and that will give Woolley third base. Now she's thinking about heading home. Thought she caught the Auburn defense napping, and she scores. That is exactly what we're talking about, that Coco Woolley can cause chaos on the base pads. She's going to steal second here. Ball gets away from Peralta at short. Coco, no hesitation, comes up. And you see the hesitation by Michaela Packer. You just got to get that ball in. And what a slide. It's upheld. What a safe. Okay. Yeah. I didn't think there was any th anything there to overturn enough evidence as well, but you did see on that last replay, it looks like the tag was really never applied. Great slide by Woolley. And she was heads up from third to home. Not so much for Auburn, who essentially that's what she did. She caught him. Napping just a little bit. 
And after all the excitement, it's a one to nothing Aggie lead, and Amari Harper's got to still bat. <laughs> she was at the plate, and on a pitch that was high and away, Woolley just went all the way from first to home, essentially. <laughs> so, you don't see that every day. No, and then you got to go right back to, to the plate to continue your at-bat. And even had to pause for a review. Coming in to make the catch down the left field line is Abby Smith, so Amari Harper flies out. One down in the bottom of the first, and A&M is out to an early lead. Now Jazz Hill with a 361 average and eight homers on the season. The Arizona State transfer fouled that up right above us. <laughs> Landed on our head. That was with a loud thud. I know we got the window closed here today. One of these days when it's open, I'm going to catch one. I'm you gotta, waiting. Well, you got to <laughs> consider bringing the glove, too, some days. I'll do it without a glove. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the 0-1. Yeah, on a windy day, see, we can wave at you. We can show you that we're blocking the wind. Yeah, it'll get a little Not chilly so much for here. our camera operators. <laughs> Feel for them. They've got to be out in it. <laughs> they said gusts could possibly get as high as 30 miles per hour today. The, the consistent wind is right around 15 to 20, but gusts could get up around 30 miles per hour in this one, and Jazz Hill pops out to Maria Penta. Penta covered a good amount of ground on that one. Went into shallow center field. And with the wind blowing out to left field, Trinity Cannon is certainly somebody you have to be very careful with. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and she has flown to left. This one harmless as Abby Smith will come in to make the catch way and start getting ready for 7-0-1. Right. <laughs> so, but the Aggies are looking for the sweep today, and Amelia Leck will step in. Leck now eight homers on the season. So, Will, I was telling you before the game, I'm fascinated by Lex's timing mechanism mm -hmm. with that front foot. She will stride one to three times before the pitch arrives, and it changes within an at-bat. Interesting approach. That's high and in. Almost hit her on that front elbow. She's got a chance to become a base runner, a leadoff base runner here in the top of two with a 3-0 count. And that is high. That's a four-pitch walk. Yeah, nothing really close to the strike zone there. We talked about it earlier in the in the series with the Aggie pitching staff. Now, they did a good job so far this weekend, but limiting those free bases is a key because you don't want to give an Auburn team who struggles to string hits together, you don't want to give them free bases. And when you do that, especially with a leadoff, now there's no outs, runner on base, and you can kind of start getting them going. Yeah, if you ever want to get a rally going, get that leadoff hitter on, that's usually what starts it. But like you've said, Auburn has basically lacked the big swing this weekend, and they need to move runners. So she just got to locate those pitches. Nelia Peralta is the hitter, and during that visit, <laughs> those gusts that we said could get up to 30 miles per hour, I think we were at that. Oh, during, yeah. During that visit in the circle, it just picked up. Still blowing pretty well out toward left field, though. Those flags are moving. <laughs> Throw back. That's a close play. Ooh, almost got Amelia Leck. Yeah, heads up by Julia Cottrell. And yeah, just got the hand yeah. in in time, did like just before the tag of Amari Harper, and that's a nice pitch. Swing and a miss. And you see that coming in at 53 miles an hour. That's a lot slower 
than what the Tigers have seen the last two days. So it's going to be an adjustment, and Vessel's going to try and keep them off balance. they got to figure out an approach and stick to it. That time, Peralta rips one to left field, so two Tigers aboard in the top of two. That's exactly what I'm talking about there. Peralta stays with this one. That one hangs over the middle of the plate, but sees it all the way through, gets the hands extended, and just drives it out to left field. And that's what you have to do if you're this Tigers team. Stack hits together, get, get some sort of rally going. Now nobody's there to field the bunt, so bases are loaded with nobody out. Skyler Elkins put it in the perfect place. Yeah, I like this call here by Auburn. And what a good spot to put that bunt in. Again, in no man's land. You see Rylan Wiggins was over at second base. Amari Harper was manning first, couldn't crash to field that one. And just, it's really great placement. So now a big opportunity for Auburn. That got to the backstop, but bounced back to Cottrell so she could cover home. And then she even realized Leck had gotten off third base, tried to throw back and get her. Fortunate bounce there by the Aggies as that carom back toward home plate. Cottrell could cover the plate after retrieving it. Annabelle Weidra at the plate. So the count 2-0. and oh. And as they say, no place to put her. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, there's bases <laughs> loaded with Tigers. And that's almost, if you're Weidra, I mean, you've got to be thinking strike. Can't walk in. That goes back up the middle. Base hit. Auburn will tie the game at one as Weidra drives in Leck. A walk and then three straight hits, three straight singles, one of those a bunt single. Another nice job by the Auburn hitters, just tracking a pitch they want. Located that one still left over the middle, and Weidra takes it exactly where it was pitched. That's back up the middle in the center field. They move base to base because we've seen the Aggie outfielders make some big plays this weekend and this season in general, but. Well, also what you talked about, Donna, timely hitting has not been in favor of the Tigers this weekend. They're trying to write a different story mm -hmm. in that aspect here in the top of the second. There's still nobody out in this frame. Yeah, and the it, infield's pulled in now, too. And I'm trying not to surrender anymore. Auburn looking to take the lead. Abby Smith, it's the bottom of the order, and then the leadoff hitter for the lineup, Anna Woolers, is next. So Smith will try to turn the lineup over, and in doing so, she'll try to give Auburn the lead with this plate appearance. Well, exactly, too, that is, we talked about how many runners Auburn has left on base, you know, this weekend in the SEC series that they've had. This is an opportunity for them to capitalize. They've driven in one run. And a 3-1 count now to Abby Smith. Bases loaded. Walk will bring home another run. Peralta trots home. And the Tiger hit a home run. And she's been really hot in March. Emily Levitt, first pitch to her. That found the outside corner, strike one. When you're hoping right now to just kind of change the look again, because going from a Brooke Vessel to an Emily Levitt, you're getting different movement, different speeds, just trying to keep Auburn off balance at this point. So she went outside corner, then that was upstairs, so one and one. Yeah. 
called strike there, and Levitt gets ahead in the count. Yeah, there's that changeup we talked about. Again, it's just trying to find, it's still early in the game. It's bot or, uh, top of the second. You're trying to figure out the strike zone still just came in. You're finding out what works. Up and away, so two and two. Auburn's got to feel really good about the position that they're in right now. They've scored two, bases loaded, no outs. They've got an opportunity to put a big crooked number up here. Just missed. This A&M crowd groaned a little bit, but now a big pitch coming. Emily Levitt to Anna Wooler's full count, bases loaded. And again, Will, nowhere to put her. Mm -mm. And Wooler's has, has to be sitting strike here right down the heart of the plate. And that's back to the circle. The Aggies trying to turn two. They don't quite get the double play, but they get the valuable out at home. Yeah, a little PFP from Levitt in the circle. Julia Cottrell looking to make the heads up play and try and get two there, just not in time. It's close though. Got her by, beat it by just a half a step maybe. Would have been a huge double play. Mm -hmm. But getting the lead runner, getting Elkins trying to come home, also valuable. Here's Maria Penta, and she sent that deep to left, and that's off the scoreboard. Penta didn't start the game. She came in at second base after the injury to Rose Roach, and in her first plate appearance, rips a grand slam to left. Wow, what a shot by Maria Penta. First at bat, wasn't starting this game like you said, and just. Yeah, ball on the inner half of the plate. Gets those hands out, extended all the way through it. We talked about that win today. But man, that was a line shot, no doubter. Auburn found the big swing they were looking for. Find it in the second inning on this Sunday, and it has turned in to a six-run inning. Yeah, all of the momentum has now shifted to the Tigers after the Aggies scored that run in the top of the first the, the way that they did. You felt like, oh, that could be the, the thing that gets the Aggies going, but, but Auburn, really, really nice job just doing what they haven't been able to do yet this season, which is get base runners on and then cash in. And wow, did they cash in right there off Penta. Huge swing from Penta, who comes off the bench early in this game. Delivers one over the left field wall to clear the bases, which were loaded. It's a one-two count to Isis Trevzik. And what a big moment for her, right? Sisters in the circle. That's helping the family out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I got your back, sister. Maddie has to be in the dugout saying, thanks, sis. <laughs> Needed that. Auburn just won't quit. The bases were cleared, but now they're trying to fill them up again. Base hit. Trezvik to left field, and now the ninth Tiger will come up to the plate in the top of the second. It'll be Michaela Packer. Yeah, again, it just seems like this Tigers lineup has an approach at the plate that they've figured out what they want to do. They came in with a game plan, and it's working. Five hits in the inning for Auburn. Obviously the big one, the grand slam, but there's also been two walks issued this inning. That was by the Aggie starter, Brooke Vestal. Well, 
one, if you're Trisha Ford here, you want to see Emily Levitt settle in and be able to get you at least out of the inning. If not, they've got, it looks like Emily Kennedy's warming up in the Aggie bullpen. Out of the reach of Vestal. And the runner out at second base. They do get Tresvik. Vestal couldn't reach it. Tresvik, I think, had to hold a bit to see if she would catch it or not. She is thrown out at second base. Yeah, that just scooted by Emily Levitt. And, again, based on where the Aggies were positioned, just out in no man's land. But Tresvik, thinking it may have been caught, I think got held up and headed back to first base. But... Packer will run, but there's now two down in the inning. And Amelia Leck hits for the second time in the second inning. Started all this off with a walk. And down in the count, one and two. Steal attempt. Packer slides in safely. It's her ninth stolen base this year in 10 attempts. Yeah, she's one of the all-time stolen base leaders for Auburn. No surprise here. She's got serious speed. Although, nice tag by, catch and tag by Coco. I think the play will go under review. I think so, too. And Auburn not resting on the six runs in the inning. They're going on the attack to try to get more and put a runner in scoring position with two outs. Out. After review, the runner at first base left early. Texas A&M is taking out three outs. That is indeed the case. Packer left early. The review catches her on that, and the inning is over. But it's a big inning for Auburn. They lead six to one. As we go to the bottom of the start with Emily Kennedy, who we said when we came on the air, got her 14th win of the season on Friday night. That ties for the second most nationally. Yeah, it won't shock me if we see Emily Kennedy in this game sooner than later. And Trisha Ford, you know how, how much she loves her pitcher. She's a pitching specialist, so. Well, Shaley Ackerman joins the conversation. Those are the two winning pitchers for A&M this weekend. As Julia Cottrell leads it off in the bottom of two. So A&M was up one nothing after one, but Auburn hit the Aggies with six runs at the top of two. And if A&M wants the sweep, they'll have to come from behind on this Sunday. The Aggies are going to have to look to this veteran part of their lineup, the leadership that they've shown, especially at the plate, and you got to start stringing together some good at-bats, and again, get on how you can. Don't be chasing too much. It's about working back and, and one at a time, really. And if you surrender a six-run inning, look, it happened in the second inning. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, this one's not over, far from over. But like you said, there are no five-run homers, so you just have to right. work your way on base, and the timely hit will matter. And when you talk about veteran leadership, well, Julia Cottrell, that's over 200 collegiate games that she's played. Yeah, between Cottrell, Jazz Hill, and Trinity Cannon in the middle of this lineup, they, they have played a whole lot of college softball. Mm -hmm. 
They've seen deficits. But the Aggies have fashioned a 27 and four record. So they haven't necessarily played from behind a whole lot this year. Right, and all of their losses this year have been one by one run. Mm -hmm. So they've all been tight games. Part of this is now seeing how do you face this kind of adversity when you know another team hangs six on you in the top of the second. Well, that's a start if you're the Aggies, Julia Cottrell. Don't try to do too much. She walks. These are the defeats this season for Texas A&M. That 27-4 record, just brilliant. And as you said, all of the defeats by the narrowest of margins. Mm -hmm. Allie Enright. Enright has been nothing short of terrific this season. Yeah, she's been really consistent and really successful at the plate. And a 1-1 one -one count to her here as that pitch is high from Maddie Pinto. Will that fall in left field? No, Abby Smith will not allow it to. On the run, makes the catch. Nice play by Smith out and left. That ball is more difficult than it looks. She made it look easy, but any of those shallow sinking line drives are, uh, are tough, but she ran all the way through it. Gives the Tigers an out. Tigers looking for outs. The Aggies looking for base runners. Ryland Wiggins steps to the plate, and that's outside for a ball to start her count. Well, and speaking of deficits, a little nugget from our dear friend Matt Simon. Largest deficit of the year for AM. Previous two were three runs against Tulsa, three runs against Long Beach, and they won both. The Aggies have not found themselves down by this much this season. Fielder's choice on the ground ball by Ryland Wiggins. They get Cottrell running to second base. Well, kind of a new challenge for Trisha Ford and her team with this deficit. Yeah, it's all about how you respond. And it's early enough in the game that this game is obviously, you know, far from over, but it's how do you bounce back? Kramer Eshte. Inside on the first pitch to her. And you know, credit to the Tigers defense. They have been near perfect all weekend. They have made some really, really phenomenal plays. And they're just continuing to make the routine plays as well that are keeping the Aggies at bay. And now a strike to Kramer Eshte, one and one. Right at Amelia Leck, and that will end the inning. The Aggies got a leadoff walk but it turned into a harmless one for needed somebody off the bench at second base. It's Mariah Pinta, and she delivers the biggest swing of this Sunday afternoon. That's foul out of play. We'll go back and look at what happened to Rose Roach early in this game. She had to exit once again in the top of the first. It was a walk, and the pitch went to the backstop. She thought about second base. There's the throwback, and there's the tag. And since then, she has not returned. Yeah, and really, really big deal that Mariah Penta able to step up. She's a freshman, by the way. <laughs> so to step up in that situation, bases loaded, you have an opportunity 
to extend your team's lead and you come up and hit a grand slam against an Aggies team that's been rolling. It's, it's really impressive. And it was her third home run of the season, that grand slam. She's making her opportunities count. Check swing, Amelia Lack, and she went around. One out. It's a nice job by Emily Levitt. Continuing to go to that rise ball. That one, that's really pretty. And Leck can't hold up. So with one down, Emily Levitt looks in at Nelia Peralta. Peralta had a base hit as a part of that big second inning. Now Emily Levitt trying to make quick work of the Tigers in the third after the long second. Yeah, you if you're Trisha Ford, you want to see Levitt be able to bounce back here. Watched her get ahead in counts. She struck out the first two in the top of the third. Yeah, you see Levitt goes to this rise ball again. Really tough to lay off of. And that comes in looking like it's going to be down the middle about belt high. All of a sudden it jumps up, it's at your eyes. And now starts Skylar Elkins off of the strike. Elkins also had a single in that big second inning. It was a bunt single. Just missed the corner on the 0-1. The first five to the plate for Auburn reached in the second inning, and that's when the Aggies put Emily Levitt into the game. She had her own struggles in the second inning, but here in the third, she's starting to settle in quite nicely. Two strikeouts in this frame and a one-two count to Skylar Elkins. Let's see if she goes back to the rise ball here. Fouled off. Struck out Leck and Peralta still with two strikes on Elkins. Coco Woolley will throw out Skylar Elkins. That's what the Aggies. Instantly for the Tigers in the circle. And Penta has worked through the first two scoreless. Now goes against Kennedy Powell to start the bottom of the third. Powell, the bottom of the order. Penta will go back to the top and face Coco Woolley next. Penta pitched yesterday. Those are the numbers on Saturday evening. An A&M 3-2 win as she pitched against Shaley Ackerman for the Aggies. Well, when you trail 6-1 to one and you're the Aggies, you try to get runners on base, and they did get the leadoff hitter on base in the last inning. Looks like they'll do it again here. Base hit by Kennedy Powell. So in the last inning, really weren't able to do anything with a leadoff walk. What can the Aggies do with Powell now that she singles to begin the third? Yeah, nice job by Powell. This one just kind of hangs. She gets her hands elevated a little bit, though, to... Drop that one into shallow right. And that's why you have Kennedy Powell in the nine hole to turn this lineup over because she's got speed and now you've got Woolley next who also has speed. Went around 
Had to pause for a second to see if Coco Woolley went around on that check swing. They appealed at first base and said she did. Woolley singled to start this game and scored the first run of the game back in the bottom of the first. Feels like ages ago. <laughs> yeah, she electrified. But like you said, that feels like a long time ago because after that, Auburn put up a six spot in oh, the yeah. second. <laughs> when we talked about it in the open, right, that Maddie Penta is somehow be even better in her second start yeah. of the weekend. And she's proving that right now. I mean, it's really impressive that they saw her yesterday. I thought they hit her harder yesterday than anything that we've seen today. And that's right back at her. She will get. Coco Woolley, Kennedy Powell will move up a base. Yeah, but it is interesting with Penta. Better the second time around against a team, and that's holding true on this Sunday. Yeah, and I wasn't sure what was going to happen when they started low on Friday. Would Penta go two days in a row? Here she is making it look like it's no big deal, and she's got it. <laughs> has worked through the Aggies pretty well ever since that opening single by Woolley and then she came around to score but when you're a veteran pitcher like Penta I'm sure she's talking to head coach Mickey Dean going coach give me the ball I mean when, you, when you've when you got that kind of dominance in the circle and I'm sure her confidence is where it should be she's asking for the ball today yeah, especially a day like today when you're trying to avoid a sweep. We need a win. Give me the ball. So. Right. And right. she's earned that kind of confidence with what she's done in her career. Well, and I'm sure Mickey Dean's thinking the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I'm going to give it to my ace. Yeah. When we need it the most, mm -hmm. you have to give it to Maddie Penta. Had an 0-2 count on Amari Harper. But that missed up and away. Harper flew out to left field in the first inning. Yeah, Mari Harper missed a few games for concussion protocol. She's back. And something that's always been really has stood out to me about Amari is her consistent approach at the plate. She's always working good at bats. You never really see her chase too much or, or get out of what she's trying to do. Just missed. Yeah, Harper trying to work the count. That's what I'm talking about. Sometimes it's about having good at-bats, especially when you get down in the count early. It's about how can I work this at-bat? It may not be the result. You may not get the result you want, but you're trying your best to get on base. She did work it to a full count, but a swing and a miss on that pitch. And for Maddie Pinto, that's her first strikeout. Oh, that's such a pretty drop ball. Wow. Sometimes you just can't hold up on a pitch again. It looks like it just drops off a shelf as it gets right up to the batter's box. Jazz Hill. Popped up back in the first inning. Well, AM, they got the leadoff hitter on in the second. Couldn't do anything with it. Got a leadoff single here in the third, and Penta an out away from stranding that runner, and she may have just done it right there. Auburn never communicated. Thought that would be the third out, but it looked like they didn't communicate on who was going to take over. The ball drops. And Kennedy Powell scores. Yeah, that's that's a, an easy fly ball that needs to be caught. There has to be communication, especially from Smith in left field. That is her ball all the way. And even though Peralta is coming back, Smith has to make weekend. They have played really, really solid defense. That is a mental mistake because that's something that, again, the outfield has to take charge in that scenario. Absolutely. But the Aggies take advantage. Jazz Hill is on second base. 
Powell scores, and Trinity Cannon is someone who can change a game with one swing of the bat. And she has a strike on her to start her count. Yeah, Trinity Cannon, another one with a ton of experience. And we've seen her multiple times this year be super clutch at the plate. She's had a couple walk-off home runs here at Davis. One of them in conference play against South Carolina in an extra inning game. Well, she may have just got the Aggies a bit closer. That's a fair ball over the scoreboard, just inside the pole. Two run homer. And Trinity Cannon, 10 homers on the year, six to four. Now the score. We were just talking about it, right? <laughs> Trinity Cannon does it again. She loves this pitch. That actually went up a little bit. It was a rise ball. She gets her hands up on top of it. Rips it out of here. Were we just saying that she's she's clutch? I mean, <laughs> keeps on swinging. And now she has that howdy hat that they give out after the home runs. Very cool hat. <laughs> now Julia Cottrell. And, I mean, this has to be – Maddie Pinta is a veteran. She can pit, pitch through most things. But how do you not think a little bit that, well, there shouldn't have been a run this inning mm -hmm. because of the ball that dropped in left field a moment ago? Yeah, that's one of those that – it might come back to haunt Auburn just because, again, you're thinking that ball every time should be caught. Mm -hmm. And they're out of the inning unscathed, and it's six to one. Yeah, would have gone back six to one into the inning. Powell scored on that play. Right. And, and then Trinity Cannon did what she did. So. And this just went from a five run to a two run ball game very quickly. Changes the complexion and. Still just in the third inning. And it's a 3-0 count to Julia Cottrell. Walked on four pitches. Yeah, I think. Ty there are two outs in the inning. Allie in right to the plate. She flew out to left earlier. But it feels like she's had a batting average right around 400 all season long. She was at over 600 for most of the non-conference <laughs> yeah. play. Not too bad. No. I mean, that's a start. Fouled away toward the Auburn dugout and a 1 1 count to Enright. In right to left field, and she has tied the game. A couple of two-run homers in the inning for the Aggies. All of a sudden, it's six to six. Allie Enright continuing to have a career year at the plate. She drills that one to left field off the scoreboard. We got ourselves a, tall, a tie ball game. Inner half of the plate again. You see her sit in those legs. She's so strong. And Trisha Ford's talked about it. How she's dominant in the weight room as well. Well, largest deficit of the season for the Aggies. It's erased. <laughs> They're back even. 
quickly. <laughs> Did not take long. Well, Two homers this inning by Cannon and Enright. Well, Will, they've all come with two outs. And yeah. The Aggies have their two out hitting this year has been really impressive. Ahead of Saturday, or even this series, I believe 46% of their runs have come with two outs. That's impressive. It's really tough to do, and it just shows that they're not gonna they're not gonna roll over. Yeah, and, and I mean that has to get into an opponent's head. I mean, it feels like no inning is over. I mean, you were the third out, the hardest to get. Right. So. I mean, they say two outs, so what? And the Aggies have lived by that this year. So now with the base is empty again, Ryland Wiggins steps up. A two and two count. Fouled that off. So it was six to one Aggies, two outs in this inning. A ball drops in left field that the Tigers should have caught. The inning does not end. A run scored on that play, made it 6-2. to two. And then later in the frame, Trinity Cannon, two-run home, after a two-run home run. After that, Allie Enright, two-run home run. This thing is 6-6 six to six in the third. And down. Wiggins is trying to be a two-out base runner with a full count. This whole series has been relatively low scoring in general. This is really mm -hmm. the most offense that we've yeah. seen consistently from both teams. Six total runs on Friday night, five total runs yesterday. We already have 12 on the board and we're not through the third inning. On a full count, Ryland Wiggins gets a pitch clock violation and that adds a strike to her count so she strikes out. Emily Levitt now in the circle for A&M. Yeah, we referenced that before we went to break. This is the offensive day. This is this is Sunday run day. Yeah. Twelve runs already through three innings. And we talked about that win too. Mm -hmm. We said balls might be flying out of here today. The Aggies have the homers. But this series prior to today saw 11 total runs. We have surpassed that on this Sunday, three innings in with 12 here today. So both starters are out now. Brooke Vestal for A&M left after an inning. She ran into some struggles in the second inning. And Maddie Penta is out for Auburn. But you also referenced first two days, really good defense by both teams. Auburn's defense today has harmed them. Uh, they, they even have an error in the first inning that helped Coco Woolley go all the way around the base pass to score. And you could make a case that none of that five-run inning happens for the Aggies in the third if a ball doesn't drop in left field that should have been caught. Right, because it was with two outs. That's all. I mean, that ends the inning. They're yep. back in the dugout. Mm -hmm. And now – you got to feel like the momentum has shifted quite a bit. And Auburn's got to try and retake that momentum here in the top of the fourth. Annabelle Weedra goes opposite field, but heading over there to the line is Kramer Eshday. One out. And Emily Levitt, after coming in with some traffic on the bases, gave up some... Gave up, the, obviously, the grand slam to Mariah Penta, but has settled in nicely here. We saw her have a clean third inning. Now seems to have found her groove here. Yeah, you're right, because she strikes out two in the third and goes three up, three down, and now gets the leadoff hitter in the fourth. She faces Abby Smith, who's the bottom of the lineup. You go back to the top, and Anna Wooler's next. 
Now Levitt's going to have to field quickly and throw her out. Now the ball was dropped at first base. Had to rush everything. Tough play. Harper not able to, able to hang on to the ball at first base. Yeah, and I don't know, even with a clean throw, if that would have gotten her. It looked like Levitt rushed it a little bit. Just when you look up and see how far Smith is down the line already, she's got, I mean, Abby Smith's got serious speed, so it would have been a tough play anyways. Yeah, in the ruling, they did put a sixth hit on the board for Auburn. That's not an error. So the Tigers do have a base runner with one out in the top of the order, and Anna Woolers. Woolers 0 for 2. She's popped up and then hit into a fielder's choice. She was on base in the second when Mariah Penta launched the grand slam. Fouled away. Another one fouled away and a one-two count to Anna Woolers. Anna Woolers, one of the transfer portal gets for the Tigers, and she's another one in this offense. This offense has pop. It's just a matter of them being able to put it together and have multiple hitters be able to get on and, and kind of do what they did in the second. Started to offer on a pitch away, held up, and two and two. A check swing there that she made contact on. That's fouled off. Nice job by Woolers just working the count. Again, you got to think the approach for Auburn, for both teams really since it's tied, is just have unselfish at bats and kind of pass the baton. And, and that's how you get something going. You're not trying to do it all yourself. Nice pitch there by Emily Levitt. She got Woolers looking. Levitt since entering the game now three strikeouts. Well, we said when Levitt's rolling that change up and the rise ball are her go-to's. That one a change up right over the middle of the plate but hangs up Woolers. The Aggies have two outs. And here is Mariah Penta. The grand slam in the second after she did not start the game. She went in at second base due to the injury to Rose Roach. And it's one and one. When Penta hit the grand slam, she was the second batter that Levitt faced. So she gets another look at her. Throwback, diving in safely as Abby Smith. Well, something I've noticed just between that second inning and now, even just the first two innings in general, the Auburn hitters were a lot more aggressive and seemed ready to attack. It feels like that approach has changed a little bit. Out of play. And I don't want to say that they're more timid. It just seems like they're not being as aggressive going after early strikes in the count. And right now, you wonder if they're still a little shocked from that five-run frame and the comeback by the Aggies. 
Swing and a miss, and now Levitt has rung up four strikeouts in the last two. run to tie things up at six. And that's exactly where we are now as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. It was a Tiger six run second. It was one to nothing A&M after one, but then that's when Auburn hit the Aggies with a six run second. A&M punches back for five in the third. Here we go, bottom of the fourth. Six to six in this Sunday game. A&M looking for the sweep. Auburn looking to salvage one of them. Nice play reaching out by Annabelle Weidra. Weidra flashing the leather over at third base. Reached out, grabbed the ground ball, threw out Kramer Eshte. It's a nice play defensively. Again, that's what we were talking about, right? That we saw those plays so many times this weekend. And that's really what's kept these games so tight. Kennedy Powell. Down in the count now, called strike. Kennedy Powell, the the one who got things started last inning. She was the leadoff hitter in the third, singled to work her way aboard. She scored on the ball that dropped in left field, and, and then Cannon and Enright did what they did with the two run homers. Yeah, Powell got it all started, and it's a 1 1 count to her here. Might be a tough play, and Powell will run. Auburn simply couldn't pick it up. Amelia Leck at first base. Well, that's one of those plays where you know that Kennedy Powell has speed. So when she jumps out of the box like that, Leck is thinking, I got to move as quick as possible. So you see her head and her body start to turn towards first base before she finishes fielding the ball. Sometimes when you do that, leave the ball, uh, you don't let the ball all the way into your glove and, and that can happen. Bunt out in front of home plate, no play. Now going to third, nice job covering by the left fielder, Abby Smith, but getting back to second base is Kennedy Powell. Woolley laid down the bunt. Solid execution by a &M. We've talked about getting the bunt down on the first attempt so that there's a little bit of an element of surprise here. Really nice job by Coco Woolley keeping the barrel out there. And then heads up base running by Kennedy Powell, but really so much credit to the Auburn defense. Abby Smith getting over to third base from left field to make sure she doesn't advance another 60 feet. That's best case scenario when you've got a runner headed towards third to at least get him back to second base. Another bunt, tripping at first base. They will throw out Amari Harper. Two Aggies move up, Powell to third, Woolley to second. The Aggies using the short game. And they'll leave it to Jazz Hill with two outs. Hill has really popped up twice. The second one was the big one that fell in left field. You she see? got a double for it. Yeah. When you've seen her pressing a little bit at the plate, it feels like this series in general. Swinging a thing she probably doesn't normally swing at. But in talking to Trisha Ford, she's like, you just got to relax. She knows how to play the game. She's one of the... She's one of the veterans we were talking about that has played a lot, a lot of college softball.
Well, a 3-0 count. A base is open, but you do have to face Trinity Cannon next. Not the person I'd want to face yeah, next. That's not what you're looking to do. But it is a four-pitch walk to Jazz Hill. Cannon will come up with the bases loaded. And the trick here is, and she knows this, but if you're Trinity Cannon, you don't want to think about, I need to hit a home run right here. You're thinking line drive. Line drives are what turn into home runs. So any solid contact with the bases loaded will do. But also you gotta be patient because we've seen Rolf throw four straight balls. Well, this is gonna be possibly one of those moments you circle by the time this game's over. Mm -hmm. Bases loaded, two outs, and one of the best hitters in the SEC at the plate, and the first pitch to her outside for a ball. The Davis Diamond crowd letting her know about some control issues. It's a big moment for Rolf, though, right? Yeah. Sophomore trying to make a statement here. Can she bear down and get it done? On the road facing this crowd that is only going to get louder if you continue to miss. She gets a quick word from her first baseman, Amelia Leck. That's a veteran move. Just letting her know, hey, we got you. You don't have to, you don't have to do this all yourself. That stayed up, didn't miss by much. She's got to find it here. Because again, there's nowhere to put her. Comes back to throw a strike. Still has to face Cannon right there in the box from the right side. Cannon, the homer earlier, was her 10th of the season. Silence the crowd for the moment. But still has to come back and get Trinity Can. Emma Rolf, the 3 1. Ends up walking her, and that will give. A&M the lead. Home from third base is Kennedy Powell. Julia Cottrell at the plate to face Tambora. First pitch, opposite way, it's gonna go foul. Isis Trezvic running over there to get it a look, but well out of her reach. Well, we touched on it earlier, but Julia Cottrell a really unselfish at bat last inning. She worked a walk instead of trying to get it done herself. And and then Allie Enright comes up and hits the home run last inning, so. That's looped. That'll land in center field. Two more coming home for the Aggies. Nine to six. Cottrell drives in. Woolley and Hill. Yeah, Julia Cottrell serves this one into shallow center field. She goes down to get it. A little bit off balance, but finds the grass out there. And two more come around to score for the Aggies. And now they've got a three-run lead. That's kind of what you were talking about. Didn't have to do too much. Put it in play. And two more come home. I think the Aggies will get another mm -hmm. runner into the game for Julia Cottrell. I think that's sad Price. That is. Price will go to second base to run for Cottrell after the two RBI single. Allie Enright will be the eighth Aggie hitter to the plate for the second straight inning. They sent eight to the plate in that big third, eight to the plate here in the fourth. Auburn still trying to shut this thing down with Milena Tambora in the circle. Enright, the big two-run homer her last time and a 1-0 count here. 
Well, at this point, it's who's going to make a play for the Tigers to get them out of this inning, back in the dugout, and try and flip the momentum again. A&M, eight runs in the last two innings, and now a 9-6 to six lead. After two, it was 6-1 to one Auburn. This game has been flipped upside down. A roller coaster today. <laughs> We're only about halfway through. Well, the Aggies are going to add to the lead. That goes all the way to the wall after it got through the infield. The pinch runners score, Lavelle and Price. That's 10 runs in their last two at-bats. The Aggie offense has found it. Allie Enright taking this one the other way. Gets past the diving Mariah Penta at second base. And two more runs are going to come in to score. So that one gets all the way to the warning track out in right center. And it's happening with two outs again, Donna. <laughs> I mean, no inning is over. No. They keep rolling with two outs, and they have not just come back and taken the lead. Now this is a serious disadvantage for Auburn. You're down five. Yeah, and we were saying how they were going to have to chip away. Well, you put up two five-run innings. I'd call that chipping away. Uh, that took huge <laughs> chunks out of it <laughs> as they chipped. Yeah, a little more than a chip. It's probably yeah. a chunk. <laughs> <laughs> and now if you're Auburn, it's you're looking at you, you probably need multiple crooked numbers Yes. to get back even in this one. Well, and it's not over. At all, by any means, we still have, you know, the five, six, and seventh innings to play. But it's really. Well, Wiggins may have just added to their deficit. Opposite field home run. I mean, the Aggies are unleashing on Sunday after they were down six to one. Wiggins deep to right. 13 to 6, AM. Another Oppo Taco home run. This time, Ryland Wiggins. Oh, watch how she lets that ball get deep in the zone. Sits in those hips. Gets all of that one. And extends this Aggie lead. It was eight hitters to the plate in the third. The Aggies have batted around in the fourth. And the offensive onslaught continues. Kramer Eshte now at the plate. It's the Aggies with the home runs in this series. Four over the first two days of the series. Homers today by Trinity Cannon, Ali Enright, and Ryland Wiggins. In play or out of play? That's in play, but out of reach. Nobody's going to able to going to be able to run that down, and it's just. Almost weird, Donna, that after two innings, you're thinking, well, Auburn is poised to salvage and, and may even blow out the Aggies here today up 6-1. to one. Right. We're in the bottom of the fourth. I mean, you could almost call it now an Aggie route, 13-6. <laughs> yeah. to six. Now, like you say, it's not over. The wind's blowing out today. This is the final game of the series. That's where you can get the runs, but. No, but, but, I mean, now, I mean, a real deficit to make up for the Tigers. Right. And for an Auburn team that, like we've talked about, has struggled to put up those crooked numbers and piece together long innings with different ways to get it done. It's not always going to be the long ball or, or, you know, or speed. It's going to be one thing or the other. And they've struggled to do that consistently. So you had to feel good when they were up six to one going, okay, we, we did it. But the Zaggy team said no, not yet. No. <laughs> to the tune of 
12 runs in the last two innings. Well, that's got to be the toughest part for this Auburn team is when you get a lead like that and you've got Matty Penta, who, by the way, was dealing in the circle mm -hmm. up until that fly ball to left. And and now you're going, well, how do we how do we overcome a seven run deficit? We were up five. And it's it's something you don't necessarily like to harp on too much, but it might be the biggest play out of all this, the way this all started. Yeah. A drop fly ball, fly ball in left field that would have been the third out in the third inning. But now if you're it, Auburn, who's going to be the leader, the, you know, the one who steps up and puts this one to, to an end? And that will finally bring the bottom of the fourth. Totals 19 over the first two games for both teams combined. We got 19 today on the board. So Auburn, if they're going to avoid being swept, they're going to have to hit the comeback trail. Isis Trevsik is one for two in this game. Leads off the fifth. Tresvik singled back in the second inning, struck out swinging in the first. And the other problem for Auburn, kind of like you mentioned early, earlier, uh, Emily Levitt is kind of starting to settle in now. Yeah. After right when she came into the game, she struggled. Uh, the grand slam was hit off Emily Levitt early in her relief appearance. Uh, but her last two innings, she's been just fine. Yeah, I wasn't sure how long Trisha Ford would keep her in with the way that it started off when she came in the game, but gave her an opportunity to settle in, and, and we've seen her go to work here. At one point, I believe it was in the second inning, we saw Trisha Ford. Basically, she just left the A&M dugout, yeah. <laughs> went down to the bullpen, and had a chat with the two winning pitchers earlier in this series, Emily Levitt and Shaley Ackerman. They were down there having a laugh <laughs> after a while. But I guess you can breathe a little easier when you know you've got the series secured and you're looking for the sweep. That's a strikeout by Emily Levitt. Levitt executing that changeup again. You see that fl she flips it over. It's a really tough pitch to hit. She's now struck out three hitters in a row. And she has five strikeouts after coming in in the second inning. And now a base runner. Michaela Packer he is a one-out base runner. Yeah, and Packer's got speed, so she's not the one you want to have on base. First base number 34, Billy Lay. So Levitt cruising along, then hits Packer with a pitch. Amelia Leck. Leck, eight home runs on the year. Having a little discussion about where that last pitch was. Which, by the way, the umpire called the ball. Yeah. But I'm sure she wants to know. I mean, that's smart because she wants to know what she what she can lay off. And she's looking for something to drive here. We saw Leck hit one out in the bottom of the, or sorry, top of the seventh Saturday afternoon. We know she's got a lot of pop. High for a ball and a two and one count. Yeah. 
So two and two to Amelia Leck. Full count now. So looking for base runners, trying to create two aboard with one out. Fouled that away, so stay alive and uh, still with a full count. And Auburn looking for an answer. And like we said, it starts with getting those base runners. So I think for Leck here, it's, hey, it's either got to be something I can drive or I'm laying off trying to work a walk. Center field. Waiting on it was Jazz Hill. A big pitch by Emily Levitt with a full count. So instead of a couple on, there's a couple out. And Nelia Peralta, who is one for two, will step in. Peralta singled as a part of the big second inning for Auburn. She did that off the starter, Brooke Vestal. Her first time to face Emily Levitt, she struck out swinging. And Levitt starts her off with a strike. <laughs> Quickly down in the count, 0 and 2. Levitt doing a nice job of mixing in that off speed. Just keeping the hitters off balance right now. A lot of Peralta's at bats. She's a really patient hitter. Obviously down one and two right now, but she's one of those hitters that can fi wait, find her pitch, and get something going. That's toward the gap in left center, base hit. And on the throw, Peralta's going to second base as Packer goes all the way to third. That's a really nice piece of hitting. Two strikes, two outs. So a chance for Auburn. Two in scoring position. 13 to 6 Aggies. They look for the sweep. A&M 7-1 in SEC play. If you look at the standings, they're really just behind Tennessee, who's 4-0, Tennessee having played one less series than the Aggies. Tennessee plays tonight at South Carolina. But A&M has done more than enough to keep pace early in the race for an SEC crown. Yeah, and they've got, again, they got to go – they got a big one in uh, Baton Rouge next weekend, but got to like where, they, where they're at right now. And I believe after yesterday's win, it was the best SEC start in program history. Mm -hmm. And again, Trisha Ford in her first year at A&M got the Aggies back to 500 in the SEC. They hadn't been 500 since 2018. And well above that mark already in 2024. They finish off the Tigers, they sweep them, and they get to 8-1 in the league. 
They swept South Carolina here to start SEC play. Went on the road and took two of three from Mississippi State. Now they've taken the first two against Auburn back at home, and they lead 13 to six in the finale. And the Tigers. And with Weidra moving, it comes with a host of defensive changes for the Auburn Tigers. Ayanna Coleman, pinch hitter, leads off the bottom of the fifth for A&M. Fouled away. With one swing of the bat here, the Aggies uh, could get the sweep. Obviously, with it being the bottom of the fifth, them up seven. One, one more run puts them uh, in mercy, mercy rule territory. Hit well, but also well foul. That went a long way. Ooh. Hopped over that fence in the Aggie bullpen, then went on out of here. <laughs> Coleman. On the run, play is made by Nelia Peralta. Really smooth defense over there. That looks so pretty. I, talk, I was telling you earlier you did. about Peralta's and, and defense. That was a visual of it. I mean, she's played so much shortstop, everything just looks routine. Yeah. I would call it, I would say it's like nonchalant, but it's not lazy. She just is very smooth, and it looks like so natural to her. There's Coco Woolley. Center field deep. That is way back, and that ends the game. Coco Woolley walks it off with the homer to center field. 14 to 6. The Aggies will win it. Well, Coco Woolley stands in to hit. And this time.